Yes, um, yes. So now we're, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about tools. Um, so for system admin, um, one of the things that's kind of challenging about sysadmin, describing the tools that you use to be successful, is just that it's very much appropriate to your specific system. You know, it, it's really dependent on what enterprise you're working with, what, B, what, what your BYOD policies are, that sort of thing. But there are some tools that are pretty much universal um, that just about any enterprise sysadmin is going to want to be able to make use of. Wireshark is really, really important. Um, it's very useful for identifying sort of network activity and network uh, you know, errors that are happening on the network and just being able to get sort of a full scope picture of what's happening. Uh, PowerShell is, I mean, everyone uses PowerShell all over the place. If you're in Windows, you're probably using PowerShell for good reason. It's a, it's a great, very robust sort of build on to the old Windows, Windows command shell that's good but not necessarily as robust as you might want it to be in you know 2019. Um, again, this is Windows specific, but it's the greatest suite of tools I've ever seen in my entire life. I love sys internals. They're just absolutely incredible. Anything you could ever want to know about an executable or a piece of hardware or something on your machine, sys internals can help with. And so you, the more familiar you are with those, the better Windows administrator you're going to be. Um, as I'm going through this list, I realize I'm very Windows specific. If, you, if you're not familiar, <laughs> if you're not aware of my background in terms of sysadmin, um, most of my sysadmin work was as a Windows administrator. So you're going to have a little bit of that bias coming in here. But the great news is that Windows is you know, an incredibly popular, common uh, operating system, both on the enterprise and the personal level. So I'll make sure to slide some more Linux stuff in here when we do our actual course on it. But <laughs> you're, you're not going to go wrong knowing more about Windows. Um, that said, RDP, or Remote Desktop Protocol, those tools are universal. They're not just Windows, not just Mac, not just Linux, they're everything. Um, what that basically is, is when you're working with a user and giving them the information isn't quite working or talking to them isn't quite working, RDP is actually the ability to connect to their computer and with a graphic interface, sort of the same way you would if you were logged on yourself, actually manipulate and control that computer. Uh, that gives you the ability to do you know, better troubleshooting on site from a distance. It, you know, for a lot of sysadmin roles, you're going to be uh, a substantial distance away from a lot of your customers, a lot of your clients. So being able to connect to them remotely and manipulate their screen and manipulate their, their operating system is just essential. Uh, the MMC is another Windows specific. It's the Microsoft Management Console. Um, this again, if you're using Microsoft as your, as your enterprise solution, it's, it's a management system you're just going to want to be familiar with. And like I said at the beginning of the slide, just it's going to depend on your particular system and your particular role as a sysadmin, but most of your day is going to be spent using some of these tools. Speaking of most of your day, what does a typical day as a sysadmin look like? Um, I would say it depends on the sysadmin, but generally speaking, in my experience, your day starts early and ends late. Um, because you're a customer facing role and because what your role is for disaster preparedness, your role is so essential to sort of normal operations. Uh, you spend a lot of your time communicating with users and you spend a lot of your time sort of trying to solve these puzzles, working you know, long hours in usually a pretty comfortable situation. Now, the great thing about cybersecurity is you're usually in an office job, unless you came into this through the Navy, in which case, you know, depends. Um, but yeah, your typical day, you're gonna be using uh, usually a ticket system. A lot of people use JIRA, kind of depends on your, your particular workflow. Um, but some sort of ticketing system that allows you to track your workload and allows you to keep track of you know, issues that have been open for longer. Um, you're going to be communicating back and forth with the users on that. Again, that's where the RDP and that's where just sort of the customer service side comes in. Uh, you'll be doing basic to advanced troubleshooting. Um, I only have basic on this slide because, again, this is kind of the intro course, but again, sysadmins can be every level of the technological skill. Uh, but you're going to be doing troubleshooting. You're going to be identifying problems, uh, often from very incomplete information. When you're a sysadmin, you will get some of the weirdest questions that make absolutely no sense. Uh, people will make very strange decisions and just assume you know how to handle them. Uh, so you're gonna, be, you're gonna spend a lot of your time just identifying the actual root problem and usually trying to identify the root cause of that problem. And then of course, once you've figured out the problem, maintenance and recovery, actually fixing what you've identified is key. Uh, direct support. Direct support is slightly different from standard IT in the sense that direct support generally is in reference to um, you know, VIPs or, you know, important meetings or some specific situation that you're being pulled in as a sysadmin just to handle that thing. Uh, in my experience, you know, I've had to do a lot for, like, companies that wanted to broadcast, like, their board meeting on YouTube. So I had to set up that stream and get all the stuff put together. And so one of the skills that you really want to have for that sort of direct support is the ability to find out what's going to be happening, you know, have that clear communication, and then very quickly get spun up on whatever technology you're going to support. Uh, because a lot of your users aren't going to know the difference between you know one type of one like Vimeo or YouTube, they're not going to know the difference between how to upload a video in one place or the other, uh, and they're just going to assume that as the IT guy, you know tech stuff. Um, you know tech stuff is 
probably the most evil sentence in the English language, uh, besides I turned the antivirus off. So it's very important to be able to kind of get spun up quickly on that. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, disaster preparedness and recovery. You know, having continuity of operations plans, being able to recover from, from uh, disastrous circumstances. And what, and so, yeah, what you're and on one thing there, Joe, uh, sure. we've all, I think we've all kind of been there. If, if you work in industry, either IT or cybersecurity, as soon as you mention anything with computers, you can fix every problem that, you know, your aunt or uncle has. So. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. And, and it's not just your aunt or uncle. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the CEOs, a lot of the executives in your company yes. are going to have that same approach. Like, oh, just call the IT guy. I'm sure he knows how to use Photoshop. It's a, it's <laughs> yes. a computer thing, right? Yes. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's definitely going to be that challenge. Absolutely. And depending on who you are, that can be fun. I actually really enjoyed my time doing systems administration because it was a new challenge every day. There was always something strange happening. I always had to kind of react and adjust to the situation. I enjoyed that quite a bit. <laughs> so with that, so we talked about what your typical day looks like. What is the job overall? What are your job prospects looking like? Um, there's not a ton of, you know, not a ton of information on this slide because it's pretty straightforward. Systems administration of the career paths we talk about now is the slowest growing uh, because it's sort of the traditional IT role. It's one that got filled, has been filled pretty effectively and people know very well. Uh, so we're only looking at about 6% year over year growth, which isn't bad. It's actually keeping pace with the standard jobs market. Um, it's just not the terrifying, phenomenal growth that you're going to see in some of these other career paths. Median pay is 81000 um, That's median. It, it goes pretty far in either direction. You know, Tier 1 help desk, you're going to have a lot of like 40 to 60 k range. Um, if you're in a big city, like I live in Washington, D.C., there are people out here who as Tier 1 help desk are getting paid 65 70 uh, but in general, you're probably looking kind of at the lower end because it's an, you know, tier one help desk is an entry level job. As you go through your career, there are sysadmins. I know personally sysadmins uh, who work for, you know, major companies whose names I probably won't say on the air, but who work for major companies who are constantly putting out fires and dealing with these critical situations. And they're, you know, well into the six figure range. Uh, one or two of them are actually over the $200,000 range. Those are rarities, but it's important to understand that because sysadmin is such a wide ranging job, um, the, the compensation and sort of the job, the, the lifestyle is also going to be pretty wide ranging. And finally, as we're talking about systems administration, we want to talk about our common certifications, A+, Network+, Security+, etc. Um, this is again just a, a matter of, it's going to depend to some extent on what you're doing. It's going to depend to some extent on what enterprise you're supporting as to whether or not you're going to you know, have Security Plus, or whether or not you're going to have, you know, Linux Plus, it's that's going to matter. That's going to be dependent. Uh, that being said, A Plus, Network Plus, Security Plus, Server Plus are pretty much always a good bet. Uh, A Plus and Network Plus are kind of the basic introductions to networking and introductions to IT. Security is again the intro to security. Um, what's important here is that these are sort of the fundamental groundings you're going to want to have that are going to be useful wherever you go. Uh, and from there, you'll get into your more specific, okay, based on where I am now, that's what I'm going to be doing. 